All right, how's it going everyone? My name is Mr. Boss for the win. Again, pardon my voice, I am a little sick right now. I've kind of got a little chest cold, but nevertheless, I do want to bring you guys this commentary. So, about a week ago, Pacific Tomb, who's uh, one of my really good friends, uh, he actually did a, a history of himself on YouTube, and I thought that was a really good idea. Uh, but at the time, I didn't want to do my own because, you know, I, di I didn't want to see his taking his material. So, I felt like I'd wait a week, but of course, I'll leave his, descript uh, his channel t uh, in the description of this video. So, if you guys want to check him out, I'm sure you already know who he is. Anyways, this is going to be a three-part episode of really my history on YouTube. And I think it's a pretty interesting story, so hopefully you guys will agree. So we're going to start from the beginning. So this was, I would like to say, around November or December 2009. Now, if you recall that time... This is when Modern Warfare 2 was really at its peak. Now, uh, Modern Warfare 2 had, had just come out, like I said, for a few months, and I was really into the game. And at the time, I didn't have that professional gamer setup or anything along those lines. It was more of just like a, uh, you know, play through your speakers with a, uh, you know, with this weird Xbox controller. I wasn't a serious gamer. I like to win, but I, I didn't take anything seriously. And uh, I think there was a few instances where I went on YouTube and I searched, you know, Modern Warfare 2 material because I wanted to get better. I was not, I wasn't an awful player, but I, I wanted to improve my game and, uh, you know, become a better player overall, which is essentially what I was looking for. And so I typed in on YouTube, Modern Warfare 2 help, like multiplayer tips and tricks. And when I did that, I found a few select people. The first three people I really found were uh, Wings of Redemption. Uh, he was the first I saw, and then that led me to Machinima's channel, which where I really fell in love with the two guys of Hutch and C-Nanners, and I really liked them because they were, I could easily connect to them, which I thought was very cool. So that, for the next two or three months, really, I said, okay, I want to be like those guys. Now, I didn't start YouTube to... Uh, you know, show people to do better at the game. That's what it kind of has evolved to now because I, I've noticed that I have can do a fairly good job at presenting tips and tricks and materials about video games, etc. But what I really started YouTube was to become friends with Hutch and C-Nanners and be friends with those guys and ultimately at that point to become a Machinima Respawn director. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about fame. I just wanted to be friends and hang out with C-Nanners and Hutch and wings and all those guys because you know I was really interested in the the concept of being part of this little YouTube world uh, where anyone and anybody can become a, a superstar and can be huge and can have that uh, you know story of awesomeness and there's a really nice quote that um, I've really always carried with me and it, it's by Confucius so uh, I learned this in my history class I think the same year it was either 2010 it was my world history teacher and he said uh, the man who moves a mountain begins by carrying away small stones. And that's always really stuck with me because I've never been a flashy guy. I've never been a guy who's uh, going to do this or going to do that or do something really flashy. You know, I'm all about just small progressive steps and doing things on my own or doing things with a group, but in a small way. And, you know, just gradually building to greatness, which is, uh, you know, ultimately what I'm looking for. But I'm getting sidetracked. So... At the time, I didn't have a lot of money, you know, I was working, um, I think I had almost just started my first job, which was at a Chick-fil-A, so a lot of my money was just being saved, and uh, at the time, I didn't, I had this, like, old Dell PC, and I said, you know what, I gotta, I gotta upgrade, so I asked my father, and uh, I was like, I need, I need a laptop, I'll like, um, you know, this computer's really old, and, uh, you know, it wasn't like a, a demanding, you need to buy me a laptop right now, it was more like, you know, is this something I, uh, I want to do a few things with this laptop? Would you be interested in helping me purchase this? And so I paid for half of it. He paid for half of it on the account that I got some good grades in school, which I ended up, I think I made the good grades. So uh, he helped buy for like half of it. And then in March of 2010, so about four or five months after Modern Warfare 2, I went online and I bought an HD PVR. A lot of people didn't stay away from the HD PVR because it was around $200, a little more expensive than your uh, your Dazzle or Easy Cap. But I went th with the HD PVR because you know I had listened to so many commentaries. C Nanners HD PVR, Hutch HD PVR, Wings HD PVR. You know you got to go with it. <laughs> and so that's ultimately what I did. And for the longest time, it was just a little kid, me sitting in my room. Uh, you know, making commentaries on this white MacBook, 
uh, MacBook Pro or whatever it was. And I didn't have a microphone. I didn't have a script. Um, you know, the first commentary I made, I was scared to death. I had no idea what people are going to think. Is this guy going to be a loser? Is this guy going to be a douchebag? You know, what is it? What are people going to think of him? And that's some of the things that I really worried about. I was worried about, like, not being accepted and, and trying so hard and investing so much money and, and just not being good, being a failure. Because that's my ultimate fear in life is being a, a failure and not, not doing something successful. But I think I'm harping too much on this topic. I've got about a minute and a half left in this episode. <clears throat> uh, so I want to make the most of it. So... I'd gone about two or three months with about a hundred or so subscribers. I'd messaged a lot of people, guys like Junkyard, White Boy, um, you know, Wings, and uh, Wings eventually did respond to me. But the very first big YouTuber, Machinima Director, to respond to me was uh, Junkyard129, who is probably one of my my greater YouTube friends today. Uh, we play Black Ops all the time, really. When he's on, when he's not busy. And, uh, you know, he, I had, I had like four videos up and I had asked him like these detailed questions, you know, Hey junkyard, how do you get on machinima? How do you do this? How are you successful? And he's, he spent the time and wrote me about a four paragraph response that I, I really took to heart. I still have it in my YouTube inbox today. Uh, it's, it's the very first message someone sent to me on YouTube. So, um, I'm really appreciative whenever I see that message. It really takes me back down memory lane, uh, and to see all the things that where I've come from, what happened and, uh, where it went from there. So after I saw that message, I knew that I needed to grow because it's not the fact that my window was closing, but Modern Warfare 2 was the era of the commentator birth, really. So, um, anyways, this gameplay is coming to a close. We're going to pick this up in part two, uh, where I'm going to talk about a lot of the people that I've really met and some of the opportunities that I've been given uh, to become a little bit more successful on YouTube. So, like I said, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for like and subscribe. Uh, stick around for part two. I'll have that in the description once that video goes live. Take care. Have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.